Hi, my name is Alvin, and today I'll be teaching you how to make my prime rib with garlic butter. So prime rib is commonly eaten around the holidays, and I love prime rib. I love steak. Steak is my number one favorite thing to eat and to make in the entire world. If you don't know what prime rib is, it is essentially just a bunch of ribeyes stacked together. It is what ribeyes would be if you did not cut steaks from them. And for the seasoning, this is just a very seasoned garlic butter with a lot of spices. It's just gonna help the prime rib get a lot of flavor and it's gonna taste really awesome. Garlic and butter go really well with the steak, so why not just have it with prime rib? And this method, you're kind of coating the whole thing. I know it's a lot of butter, but it's gonna help flavor this huge piece of meat. It's gonna melt off, we're gonna use that later, so don't worry about it. And it's the holidays, you're not trying to diet. I hope not. If you are, maybe don't watch the rest of this video because uh, it's a lot of butter. <laughs> this technique is actually very interesting. I was actually trying it for the first time. This is like the 500 degree technique where you put it in the oven, super, super hot, 500 degrees for around 30 minutes depending on the weight and size of your roast. And then you do this technique where you just, you turn the oven off, but you leave the door closed and you do not open it because the residual heat is supposed to continue to cook the prime rib all the way through. It's gonna smell great, it's gonna look great. You cannot open the oven door. If you open the oven door, the heat's just gonna come out. You're just gonna have a raw prime rib and that's no good. If your oven has a fan that helps take away that heat, this method will not work. It's just gonna end up raw. So double check that your fan doesn't try to carry away that extra heat or else you need to look up some other cooking methods for the prime rib. Uh, I cook it to medium rare. You can cook it however you like. Just anything besides medium rare. Probably can't be my friend. <laughs> you take it out after that two hours or two and a half hours, you let it rest. And while that kind of you know happens on the side, we want to make a gravy. Because prime rib is essentially cooked as a whole roast, it's actually not going to get super seasoned all the way through. So when you slice it, you actually need to make sure that you have some sort of seasoning or a sauce. In this case, we're gonna make a gravy. What you can do is you can use the drippings from the pan that you made the prime rib in, which was the beef fat, all that butter, all those flavors, all those juices, that garlic. It's still in there, don't waste it. So you're gonna wanna strain out, take out any of the super burnt bits, leave behind the fat and the juices, combine that you know, with some flour, with some beef stock and some other things, and kind of cook it over heat until it gets nice and thick into a sauce. So that's gonna be the gravy for the prime rib. Um, it's pretty awesome and you can season as you go. When I was making this video, actually it was pretty late. I think it was like even a weekend where it was just a super expensive, huge chunk of ribeye and I really did not want to mess it up and I was very scared I was gonna you know, make it. You don't mess it up and have to spend more money to get it right and it is an expensive cut so make sure that you do treat it well. If you have a meat thermometer, that'll save you a lot of headache into knowing if it's cooked or not. You wanna aim for around 130 to 135 if you're going for medium rare. Anything higher than that is just more well done. And my favorite part is just really just, it's that reveal. It's when you first get that nice thick slice out of there and the whole thing just comes out. It's juicy, it's pink, it's perfectly cooked. You plate it with some nice mashed potatoes, you plate it with some nice vegetables, you pour some gravy, you kind of drench it in gravy for me, and that's pretty much it. You kind of go ham, you go in and you try not to get a second slice, but knowing me, I'm gonna get like three slices. You're not gonna eat it only at Christmas, you're gonna want an excuse to make it any time of the year. When you get prime rib, make sure you go to a good butcher, Depending on how many people you have, you might need to ask for a four bone roast, a six bone roast, an eight bone roast, 10 depending on how big your dinner party is and how hungry you think everybody's gonna be. And you wanna make sure that you look for prime rib with the most deckle or the most cap because the cap is the tastiest part on a ribeye. It's delicious and you kinda want as big of that muscle as possible. So if you're having guests over, it's a huge way to sort of entertain them, impress them, because when you serve up prime rib, there's a whole theatricality bringing it out to the table, cutting huge slices, serving everybody. So yeah, if you do make it, let me know, send over pictures, ask me questions. It's you know one of my favorite recipes of all time I've ever made on Tasty, one of the proudest I've ever been. Happy to help you guys out, and I just want you guys to enjoy your steak as much as I do.